Cashflow Diary Podcast, episode 192. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Cashflow Diary Podcast. The podcast that teaches you insider tips, tactics, and strategies for creating leveraged streams of cash flow into your life. Learn from top performing entrepreneurs, business owners, investors, and thought leaders from across the globe as they share their secrets to success. Like what you learn on this and other Cashflow Diary podcast episodes? Go to learninvestingnow.com and sign up to receive powerful tips and information that will help you succeed as an entrepreneur and investor. Now, here's your host, investor, entrepreneur, business owner, educator, speaker, author, and master facilitator of Robert Kiyosaki's Cashflow Game, Jay Massey. Hey, guys. As you know, from time to time, I travel and go different places. I happened to have done an event uh, a little while ago, I guess, now. And I, what we were going to do for the next couple episodes is bring you little bits and pieces, just the good parts. We're going to cut out the bad parts, right? <laughs> you didn't have to sit through the entire thing. You get exposure to the good parts, and we're going to share with you some information, and hopefully in a different way, because I've been reworking it, redoing it, learning some new things, and we're going to just give you some of those excerpts. Now, many of you, if you want to get you know the complete A to Z, here's a quick way to do that. You can pick up an electronic copy of my book currently. Uh, go to, or send a text message to 72000 uh, the keyword is book. Text the word book, B-O-O-K. You're using a mobile device. Do it now while you're listening. B-O-O-K to 72,000, For those of you outside of the U.S., it's going to be cashflowdiary.com forward slash free book. That's F-R-E-E-B-O-O-K, cashflowdiary.com forward slash free book. And it's going to fill in the blanks that might come up for you uh, during this uh, these next couple of episodes here. So I just want to make sure that you have a way to, to get those questions answered, uh, or at least begin to get those questions answered. So anyway, let's, uh, let's just dive right in. Real estate investing for me wasn't something like, it wasn't a move forward. It was a way to possibly eat. Does that make sense? Understand that everything I share with you is coming from a perspective of this wouldn't be nice one day if we could. It was if I don't, we don't eat. That's a, two completely different motivations than some of you may be working from. One of the things that I often tell people is that comfort kills dreams. Comfort kills what? Dreams. 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 Whose? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> One of the challenges, specifically with real estate or specifically with investing, it's one of the most scary subjects on the planet. Period. So unless you have to or put yourself in the mindset of, I got to make this happen, you likely won't. Because, you know, if I don't, at least I'm still going to eat tonight. At least I still have a place to stay. At least you get what I'm saying. And no matter how many facts and stats I put up here and, and tell you, it, it still may not motivate you to actually get these things done. I mean, these, these are all recent statistics that are commonly available. I mean, only 58% of Americans have a job right now. What, what, what does that mean about the other 42 it, they're unemployed, right? Um, how many of you realize you don't need a job, but you need a source of income, right? Those are two completely separate things, except here's the challenge. With education, it has a purpose, and the purpose is to train you or I to recognize opportunity. The challenge is we've all been trained to recognize one type of opportunity spelled J-O-B. Yes? yes? Yeah. My hope today is to help you recognize additional opportunities other than that, which is spelled J-O-B. Now, because I had one person tell me, they said, you couldn't find a job, so you end up went out and created one for yourself. I'm like, yeah, that's pretty much right. <laughs> that's exactly what happened. You know, uh, the average American household Kevin carrying $75,600 in debt, that must have excluded Californians, right? You know, <laughs> in that case. The, and here, here's just some more numbers, just for fun. You know, at this point, American families are approximately $7.7 .7 trillion poorer than they were back in early 2007. Hand me one of those uh, bottles of water real fast. How many of you think you understand inflation? Show of hands. Be honest. Okay, here's where we go. We have, and how many of you are willing to admit you actually have no clue? 
You're like, I have no idea. Okay, so how many say, I do understand? How many of you say, I have no clue? All right, let's go back to 100% participation. One of the most basic skills of any investing or investors is to have an opinion. Now, you all have one. I've only given two choices. <laughs> so, okay, so let's try this again. How many of you are willing to admit or say that, hey, you know what? I, I actually understand what inflation is. How many of you think you know? How many of you say, I have no clue? Okay, we're getting closer. <laughs> All right, here's the point. It's, it's very, very simple, in, in my opinion, and it comes down to something as simple as a bottle of water, and you're like, what does this have to do with real estate investing? Everything. You'll see. Let's pretend for a second in this room that this is the last bottle of water. Here's the conditions. I'm going to give every one of you $1, $1, one U.S. dollar. You cannot borrow someone else's money. You can't borrow, uh, you can't share, you can't pool. You have access to $1. And this is the last bottle of water. Is water something that's necessary? Yes. Absolutely. So do I at least have one customer in here for this bottle of water? Yes. Of course. We hold an auction. What is the absolute most this will sell for? A dollar. And it's one bottle of water. Now, we're going to take that same condition. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go, I'm going to run back to D.C., talk to the Treasury. Me and Janet Yellen are going to get together, and we're going to give you nine more dollars each. So now you have a total of ten. Same rules apply. Same bottle of water. We're going to hold an auction. Now, what is the absolute most that this bottle of water is going to sell for? Ten dollars. Did you buy any more water? No. It's still the same, what is this, 16.9 uh, fluid ounces, is it not? Yep. Yes. So, what happened? You lost purchasing power. Here's the challenge. Without learning how to leverage, without increasing your financial education, they can print money faster than you and I can earn it. And that's the problem. They can print it faster than you and I can earn it. If your income stays tied to a clock, you will not make it. It has to evolve beyond that. And that's why real estate investing becomes so important. That's why these statistics can become obsolete with the correct understanding and financial information. This is why seven point, this is why the American families are $7.7 .7 trillion poor or poor or something like that. You know what I'm trying to say then, yes, some words are difficult. <laughs> That's one of them for me. Uh, then in 2007, it, because all you got to do is ask somebody. It, how many of you can remember the year 1974? Okay. Uh, how, was, was any of you working? In, in you were in college. Okay. You were working in 74. Do you remember what you were earning back then? A dollar fifty an hour. Okay, awesome. And would you say in 1974, if you said, "Man, if I could earn a hundred grand a year, that would be great. That would be like the moon and then some," because that was then. But today, a hundred grand is still working poor, especially in Orange County. You know, think about these things and ask yourself: Is what I'm doing, what I'm using my number one asset for, time? Is it producing a, a return that has the ability to exceed their ability to print the money? You realize we don't have control over that. I can't stop them. Yes, they make you promises. But how many of you have noticed that? Know how many times they have promised to stop quantitative easing? That's code for printing money. That, that still has not happened. <laughs> oh, we slowed down. Okay, slowed down still means you're going forward in printing. <laughs> That's really what it means. And those are the things that we have to understand how to interpret and look at. Um, also in 1974, uh, something in, two very interesting things happened. One, um, it, does anyone happen to remember what it cost to mail a letter, like what a stamp price was in that year? <laughs> exactly. It was a dime. And it mailed a letter. What does a stamp cost today? I, it's still one letter. It's not going any further. It's the same distance. <laughs> right? So it, it, it's all of these things that are happening, but it, 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 but it didn't go from 10 cents to 44 cents the next year, right? It took some time to get there. You know, it's like that whole proverbial boil the frog slowly, 
slowly, slowly, and then all of a sudden, it's dead, didn't even realize it. Same thing happens, and it's silent unless you start looking for it in, any, in many different ways. So the, the question is, and this is the second thing that happened in 1974 that I thought was uh, very interesting, is uh, the ERISA plan, the whole thing when it comes to retirement plans. How many of you, there's only two possible answers here. <laughs> How many of you have a retirement plan? Plan. How many of you do not have a retirement plan? Okay, see, there's only two possible answers. It's one or the other. But here's what I'm going to say for most of you. I'm going to say most of you actually don't have a retirement plan. What you have is a retirement account. You have no plan of what you're actually going to do when it comes to retiring, but you have a place where you're storing the money, and it's a retirement account. Does that make sense? And that's a very unique and distinct uh, distinction that I think more people need to grasp because most have never calculated how much they need for retirement. And when you do, you calculate a stack of cash. You say, oh, I need $2 million, half a million dollars, of 1.5, whatever the number is, I don't really care. I say you could make it work if you had $0 in the bank, if you knew how to just develop an asset and sell it in the marketplace. For example, I was not blessed with the gift of, uh, say, singing. Specific, well, that's not quite accurate. I won't be making any music that any of you are going to be purchasing anytime soon. <laughs> Let's put it that way. But if I did, isn't it possible to live off the royalty income that that produces? What if you had, a, 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 this was your financial situation. On the first of every month, $10,000 was deposited into your account. The condition was that at the end of that month, you had to spend every dollar or else the next $10,000 would not be deposited. How many of you, by a show of hands, could make that work? <laughs> exactly. Even if your bank account was zero, right? That's my point. We need to learn how to develop assets and streams of income, not a stack of cash. And when you do that, you'll realize that real estate is obviously one of the best ways to do that. Because not enough people... You know, don't, don't, they just don't know what they don't know and how they can actually get there, you know. Um, and, and there are a number of us, and some of you know them, who, people who are concerned about outliving their money because medicine has advanced and all these other things. For all of those reasons and more, I say real estate makes awesome sense uh, because that was my situation in a sense. Understand, my wife could not eat or drink. Something as simple, again, as this same bottle of water or bread was not consumable for her. I could not walk and talk. So if I tried to walk and talk, literally from where I'm standing to right here, I would faint. I couldn't do both of those things simultaneously. So in that situation, did we need a stack of cash or streams of cash? The answer is streams because we didn't know how long that was going to last. Obviously, I can talk today, and yes, she's fine. She can eat, which is great. The, the point is, is when those things happen, you realize, man, how vulnerable you really, really are to things. So this becomes the, the need to develop a way to do business. How on earth is this going to work out for us to go out there and create an income for something other than a J-O-B. This is the most important part of the presentation where I need your participation. So, what I would love to know is, you tell me, why haven't, why haven't you or why aren't you doing the amount of business that you would like to do? Notice I said amount of business. So whether if you're in business and you're not doing the amount or if you uh, haven't done any, what's, what is in the way? Because my intent is to knock that out Fear. now. What's that? Fear. Fear. Okay, that's a big one, and thank you for being honest. What's your name? Uh, Gigi. Gigi. Everyone, thank Gigi. Say, thank you, Gigi. Because many, you know what, Gigi? You're the bravest person in here, because they're all feeling it. You were just the one that was willing to say it, and she said it loud. She didn't go, fear. She said it loud and proud. She's like, look, I am scared and terrified. Help. That's the type of heart that you can work with. What else is holding you back? What do you think? Yes. Negative chatter in your own head or someone else's? Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> okay, excellent. Because I, you know what? I can totally relate to negative chatter. I'll share with you very clearly some of the negative chatter I heard and can still hear from time to time. You, you can't do this. 
There's nothing in your background that says you can do this. You're supposed to bounce a ball. You're supposed to sing or something else illegal. <laughs> That's what you're supposed to do, <laughs> right? Worse, especially because I live in Orange County, you guys realize there's less than 2% black folk here, right? You may not have realized that, but you do now. So I don't get me and Vicky. We are instantly connected. <laughs> We're like, hey, there's so we don't see each other. There's just not a lot. There should be more. Which means when I'm looking for someone who's been there before and done it, it's easier when you can see yourself in someone that you have access to. But that's not, that wasn't easy. Some of you, I'm too tall, I'm too short, I'm too female, I'm too male, I'm too old, I'm too young. I've heard a lot of things. We can put anything in that spot. What else did you, what else is stopping you? Yes, Joel. Uh, existing, existing without a job, just to have an income. Existing job. So you're, this is a time thing is what you're really trying to tell me. Got it. All right, what else? Yes, yes. Money. Money. You think money is stopping you? Finding money. Okay, so you think that's stopping you? It's just, <laughs> I got it. No problem. See, all I did, just, I want, what's your name? Doris. Doris, the only thing I got you to do was to question an assumption. And that's really all I did right there. And you were like, well, yeah. You realize any excuse will do. When we're afraid, any excuse will do. And the excuse that we will often use is the one our friends will justify the easiest. If your friends say, yeah, I can't find money, you know what? I can't find money either. And there's others who will say, I can't find a deal. There's no deals anymore. And I, you know what? I haven't found any either. And suddenly that becomes the very thing. What else? Yeah. Knowledge. Nah, knowledge. I like you. Yes. But isn't that interesting? How many of you realize that Google knows everything? <laughs> right? <laughs> We're not in a shortage of knowledge. But... That is true. You got to also get the correct information and learn to take action on it. What else? Is that it? So you're saying if we weren't afraid, there was no negative chatter, you had quote unquote time, you knew how to find the money and knowledge you'd be in. There's nothing else in the way. The right opportunity. The, the right opportunity. Okay. So now we're talking about deals again. You're saying there's stuff out there, but it just, it doesn't fit. It doesn't look like what I want it to look like. Okay. Got it. Excellent. Deals, right opportunity. Anything else? Okay, cool. You're going to make this fun and easy. Here's, here's, the, here's the thing. As I said earlier, when we're afraid, any excuse will do. And the only excuse that is valid, the only excuse that is valid is the one that someone else hasn't overcome before. Period. Does that make sense? That's the only one. If someone has ever been afraid and still gotten what you want to do done, then your excuse is not valid. If someone has ever had negative chatter in their own head, but has still managed to move forward, then there's clearly, that's clearly not it. If someone has, how many of you realize that we all have 24 hours in a day? Does anyone have more? <laughs> no. <laughs> right. Exactly. What about money? Okay, don't be too mad. I'm going to answer the question because I'm sure you're probably thinking, what about money? Yeah, that was a great idea, Jay. I'd love to know more about it. I'm going to get you uh, to some answers and hopefully change the way that you're thinking about it here in, in just a second. As I said at the top of the episode, I just want to make sure, again, remind you, if you're coming up with some questions and you're wondering how to get those questions answered, they're probably covered in my book, to be honest. So go grab a copy right now. Uh, you can get a free PDF delivered to you immediately. Go to cashflowdiary.com forward slash free book. Or if it's more convenient for you, send a text message to 72000. The keyword is book. Text the keyword book to 72000. And uh, you'll be well on your way to getting deeper understanding of everything that's going on cash flow diary style. And most importantly, getting your offers on. I will talk to you guys in just a few more minutes. But what I want to do is answer that question about the money. How many of you by a show of hands are willing to admit that you have access to, you know somebody or you yourself? have access to at least 
one U.S. dollar. <laughs> oh, hold on, Doris needs to see this. <laughs> oh, oh, hold, but, 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 yeah, keep your hand up. Here's my point. The money is there, but let me, but hold on, watch this. Keep your hand up if you have completed a real estate transaction in the last 12 months, any kind. Now, okay, excellent. Keep your hand up if you've completed a, um, let me see, let me, let me have some fun with this. Uh, you've completed more than 10 in your career. Notice how the hands start going down, right? If you've completed more than 100 in your career, keep your hand up. More than 200. And now you also, in addition to those 200, have at least 100 units in your portfolio. 200 units in your portfolio. Do you get where I'm coming from? Here's what happens. Because there are individuals like Gigi and all of us who are afraid, money chases experience, period. The money is there. What it's looking for is someone who knows what to do with it. That's the thing. And here's what's really holding most of us back. Is you're right, we are afraid, but we're afraid of something very specific. And that something very specific is we're afraid of failing. We grew up, we went to kindergarten through 12th grade, and they said, don't get an F, because that's a fail. Mama said, don't talk to strangers. But yet, now you want to be in business. Guess what you're going to have to learn to do? <laughs> fail and talk to strangers. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what's going to happen. You're not going to learn it any other way because when you're in school, you're told you got to get it right. You got to get it right the first time. And you can't have any help because that's called cheating. But yet, when you talk to anyone who's done anything, they didn't get it right. They definitely didn't get it right the first time. And they had a help mentor, coach, somebody came in to help. And you've got to learn a complete new skill set. And you say to yourself, well, I got all these college degrees and I'm this and I'm that. How come I can't do this? You've never practiced that skill set. That'd be like asking a toddler to run correctly. It's not going to happen. They barely know how to walk. And here's the challenge. We all have an addiction. And it's a serious one. You're addicted to looking good. You cannot learn and look good at the same time. And because we want to look good all the time, it prevents us from learning. It prevents us from asking that question. It prevents us from saying, I'm afraid, help. Because we want to look good. You've seen a toddler walk, learn to walk anyway. Do they look good? But do they care? No, not at that moment. They don't care. Now, once they're 30, it's not too cute, right? <laughs> We're hoping they know by then. But that's the point. The only way they're going to learn is falling down and getting up and falling down and getting and then one day they fall down less than they used to and now the <laughs> my kids they just run and they won't stop and i'm just like good lord <laughs> you know they just keep going but that's great and we try to shortcut that process we try to shortcut it in many different ways and that's the challenge most of what's missing is just the training on certain skill sets in a certain sequence so that you can get to where you want to go. It's really not overly compl more complicated than that, which is where the negative chatter comes from. Because when you fail, you're like, oh, God, here we go again. See, I told you you can't do that. And you just did it again. How many of you have ever lost money? How many of you are lying? No, <laughs> right. <laughs> You've lost money, right? So let's have another competition. Let's see who lost the most. <laughs> this, <laughs> right? <laughs> All right. So let's start at $100,000. If you've lost at least $100,000, keep your hand up. All right. Let's go to a quarter of a million. Let's go to half a million. Let's go to a million. Let's go to 1.5. Let's go to two. Let's go to 2.3. Okay, I see, I still win. I hate winning both sides of these conversations. You have a winner. Where? Oh, you've got more? What's the number? I don't want to <laughs> <laughs> Okay, here's what I, he, that's more, okay, you win. Here's what that means. He now knows 
a whole lot of ways to not do something very well. And you think that has no value. Let me tell you, it is one of the most valuable things on the planet. Because here's your worst case scenario. You go out there and you try, right? Worst case scenario. You go out there and you try. And now it totally bombs. All you got to do is document that experience, turn it into an ebook, call it, here is the 19 things I tried and the $1.5 million I lost. Don't do it this way. And sell that for $19.95, and I promise you, a lot of people will buy it. Because nobody wants to get it wrong. And you begin to recoup your losses. Here's the principle. You just paid full price for the mistake. Full price. You should offer it to the marketplace at a discount. That's what happens. You give more in use value than you take in in cash value. If I paid $2.3 million for my mistakes... And then I put my mistakes in a neat little book that says, don't do this. For 25 bucks, I call that a really big coupon for you. Does that make sense? And that's my point. Because we have such an aversion, a fear of failure, fear of, oh my God, I won't look good. What are they going to think? No one cares. They're too busy thinking about what are you going to think? Go out there and try, please. Because your family is depending on it. You've got people watching and you don't even know it that want you to succeed. This whole job and time thing, it's an issue of priority. That's really it is. We've all got 24 hours. Who, had, who said the job time thing? Who was that? You. Joel? Yes. Excellent. Has there ever been an emergency in your life where you had to rearrange your schedule? So then you have time. (laughs) The the only difference is what you're talking about. See, remember when I said when real estate becomes a have to, like I got to make this happen or I don't eat, suddenly everything else gets clear. That's one of the greatest things about emergencies is it clarifies our priorities for us. I was in a state of emergency. My priorities were clear. Do this, eat. Great. After we get past eat, we'll worry about that when we've eaten. Until then, this is what I'm going to do. And right now, for most of us, that priority means if I don't go to work, job, I won't eat. (laughs) And we've got to learn the skill sets necessary Because the greatest thing, especially with technology these days, is the amount of reach and access that we do have to customers and the amount of value that we can provide simultaneously while doing other things. But we just got to learn the skill sets necessary to make that happen. So, uh, excellent. Deal's right opportunity. We're going to get to that right now. So here's the thing. There's, There's basically seven steps, in my opinion, to every business and specifically every step, seven steps to a real estate business. Then the seven steps, we're going to go through them. What it comes down to is step number one, you've got to have someone who's going to buy something from you, buy an asset from you, whatever it is. You can package your asset as a service or a product. It doesn't really matter to me. The point is it's one or the other. Real estate, how many of you say real estate's a product? How many of you say real estate's a service? Okay, let's try this again. Back to 100% participation, guys. Is it a product or is it a service? It, it's a both. It's a, it's a body. It, 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 what is it? She's like, I think it's both. <laughs> right. right. It's, it's strictly a service, in my opinion. Let me tell you why. Even if you fix and flip, guess what? This next guy can fix and flip, too. The only difference is the quality of service that you put into it. If you put in granite countertop, my granite's the same. I can go buy the granite from the same guy. You can use, okay, <laughs> you, you use quartz. Wonderful, we're getting to that. The point is, it, at the end of the day, the, the, the actual, what they're, you're selling the use of it in some way. You're just packaging your services of making something beautiful completely different. That's like the same thing with designers. You know, They can design your website here or they can design a product package here. It's a service. 
what they're buying is the quality of service, even buy and hold investing. It's definitely sales. It's the same. You, and that, that's actually harder, in my opinion, because you've got to sell the same item to the same person every 30 days. <laughs> that's really what you've got to do to keep them buying over and over again. But you need leads for people who are seeking to purchase an asset. Even if all you want to do, this is obviously, who's this? Is Albertson's asset. Make sense? And they just sold it as one-time use. And, well, unless we do something weird, it's only going to be used one time. <laughs> anyway, so you, they need a person who wants that. What I love about real estate is that everybody needs a place to live, work, play, or lay. Live, work, play, or lay. It's so much fun because you can, this is where the creativity comes in. You get to choose what type of service you wish to provide. So, for example, um, most of my assets are in uh, Tennessee, Colorado, um, Tennessee and Colorado. That's where most of them are. Right now, I'm in this weird stage. So like two of the things that we're looking for, I'm trying to get some non-recourse lending on a commercial retail project in Colorado, like an $800,000, 50% LTV, et cetera. And then I'm working on 182, no, not, not the 182, 72 unit building, looking for some more rehab funding. Once those are done, I'm actually coming back. My intent is to come back to California uh, with, and get some retail projects going here because that just sounds like fun. Plus, I have small kids, and I want them to finally see what dad does without having to spend five grand in airplane tickets to take everybody somewhere. <laughs> so, um, and I think that would be fun. But because I love going to the movies, what do you think I want to buy? <laughs> movie theater. Exactly. Very, it's just that. That's like, the, why do you want to buy a movie theater? Because I like going there. <laughs> I know what a good one should look like. I know what it should feel like. I know what it, I definitely know what it should sound like, <laughs> right? All of those things are become exciting to me, right? The the point I'm making is you get to choose how you want to play this game. So let me give you an untapped market right now that is growing at an insane rate that most of you are not thinking about, and that some of you are going to be like, oh, that's just that's just wrong. Okay. How many of you have heard of this small group of people called the baby boomers? <laughs> okay. And yes, you realize they're not really small, right? Right. So, as things like, so are they having their hips replaced? Yeah, of course. Medical devices, right? And when they were first born, what about Gerber? It exploded, right? And schools, construction, when they needed houses, when they needed cars, when whatever they have needed has grown tremendously. What right now in the U.S., just the U.S., so don't worry about the rest of the world, just in the U.S., what is currently the death rate? It's 100%. That is correct. It is 100%. So if the death rate is 100%, what do you think these baby boomers might eventually need that could be severely underpriced right now. Cemeteries. Boom. <laughs> Cemeteries, mortuaries, think the assisted. I mean, there's so many plays just right there. And you can't say there won't be a customer. <laughs> what are they going to do? Run? How? Does it work? And those are the things that we, as real estate entrepreneurs, have to look at. See, our number one advantage is proof of concept. Say that with me. Proof of concept. That is our number one advantage. If some of you, you have a device, and it looks like this. Yes? Yeah. You realize, in order for this device to happen, somebody had to talk to a whole bunch of investors and say... You don't understand. We're going to take something that already exists, the cell phone. They did not invent it. We're just going to repackage it, slap an Apple logo on it, and people are going to pay more for it. And they had to get enough people to say, yeah, I agree with that. Did they successfully do that? <laughs> yes. And then some, right? That's the thing. How many of you tonight would like to have a roof over your head. <laughs> How many of you have had that feeling all your life? Like, like that would be a good idea. <laughs> Proof of concept. 
That's what makes real estate easy to do and accessible to you and I. See, I, I'm not smart enough to invent one of those things. That's not that that psh, totally missed me. I can use it, but I'm not the guy that's going to invent it. And that's okay. I'm just smart enough to do real estate. <laughs> and that's all I care about. Because people need a place to live, work, play, or lay. And those are the things that we get to leverage. So is there, if you were going to be in the mortuary business, are there tons of buyers? The, yeah. the, another way of saying that is, what is the population of the U.S.? <laughs> You've got a customer, period. That is not the issue. So there should be no fear of, will anyone buy what I have to sell? They're there. You just have to learn how to look at it differently in various different ways. So that's step number one. You need a buyer lead. You need a seller lead. You need someone to give you the very inventory that you're looking to sell, whether that's land, whether that's, in my case, a movie theater. I'm also open to more commercial retail in California, but anyway, whatever, details. The point is you need someone who's willing to sell the item that you need in order to have it so that you can sell it as well. Well, let's, let's talk about it. A few years ago, the way real estate was transacted is that somebody woke up one day and for whatever reason decided, you know what? My real estate's good, but I want yours. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to get, I, I'm going to call tens of thousands of my best friends. We're going to put on some armor. We're going to get some catapults and we're just going to come to your land and like attack you. And when we're done and you're gone, that real estate is now going to be mine. Make sense? In theory, today, we're a little bit more civil than that when real estate transfers hands. But for all intents and purposes, it's the same thing. There are times when what we have isn't what we want. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. What we have isn't what we want. All assets, especially real assets, especially real estate, changes hands. It's going to someone. Every piece of real estate is currently owned by somebody, and it's going to change hands to someone. Guess who it's going to change hands to? It's going to change hands to the person who knows how to solve the problem of the person who owns the real estate. The reason you are having challenges finding properties is because you're looking for properties. Look for problems not properties. People have problems. I solve problems for people who happen to have real estate, period. That's what I look for. You have a problem? Do you have real estate? I can help you. If you have a problem but don't have real estate, I can't help you. For example, if you are bleeding, I'm not your guy because I'm going to faint. <laughs> that is not a problem I know how to solve. <laughs> I'm guessing you have some experience in this area. <laughs> I am not, you, I'm telling you, you pull out a needle right now and I will be the first one on the floor. That's just the way it goes. However, you say, Jay, I would really love to be able to get rid of this house so I can go retire because this happens a lot. Somebody had properties in Ohio. Who was that? I heard it was you. Yes. Okay. So well, when I've worked the, that area of the country, the people who are looking to sell are typically looking to go somewhere else because it snows up there. <laughs> And they don't like the cold anymore, and they want to go somewhere else. So all I'm doing is helping them take a nice vacation, usually to Florida or Arizona or someplace much warmer. And all I, the only thing they need me to do is figure out a way to get them out of the house so that they can go. Make sense? So now, instead of looking for a deal, what if you started looking for people, say you happen to run an ad campaign in Ohio and said, looking to move to Arizona, but feeling stuck? What does that now do? That brings to you that very person. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to say these things because we're too busy saying, here's what, I, here's what I need. Here's what I need. No one cares what you need. At all. But if you tell me that you can solve my problem, oh, please, all day long. Not only am I going to tell you what my problem is, if I know a friend who has the same problem, what am I likely to do? Tell them to. Tell them to. Suddenly, your marketing just got a lot easier when you are known as the problem solver. 
And some marketplaces where we do this, our number one, <laughs> one of our best lead sources is actually code enforcement. Many of you don't like code enforcement. I love them. Because you know what? After they give us those nice little love notes <laughs> and we fix it, all you have to do is one more thing. You already have their phone number. They're willing to talk to you. <laughs> what about you just ask them, hey, who else are you giving love notes to that isn't fixing the house? I would love to fix it. If you introduce me, I could probably fix that one too. Do you think they know who that person is? Yeah. Do you think they want the problem gone? They just want the problem off their desk. That's it. But now you've become positioned yourself a solution provider. You do that enough times, what do you think might happen the next time they get another ticket on their desk? Hey, Rod, I, you solved that last one. Can you do this one too? Oh, yeah. What did that cost you? Good business. What you were going to do anyway. All of those things, when you look for problems, not properties, you find your seller leads. All right. So I, I know a number of you are probably still taking notes, and that's good, and I appreciate that. But that was the secret right there. Problems, not properties. Keep that in mind as you're going out there. Look in your newspaper today. I kid you not. You could probably find a problem related to something real estate that you could go and solve immediately, if not sooner. Nonetheless, I appreciate you guys taking the time to listen. I look forward to talking to you soon. Until next time.